This video is sponsored by Mubi. Go to Mubi.com slash Thomas Flight for your extended 30-day free trial. I think one of the funniest moments in the Grand Budapest Hotel is this. She's been murdered. And you think I did it. Hey! Gustav H., who presents himself as being so dignified and elegant, suddenly sprints away in a ridiculous attempt to flee the authorities. But did you know his run is a reference to the 1963 Ingmar Bergman film The Silence? The Silence is set in a hotel in an unnamed Eastern European country on the brink of war. Seem familiar? In the director's commentary for the Grand Budapest Hotel, Anderson mentions it as an influence. He doesn't mention this run specifically, but I think if I show it to you side by side, its influence is clear. When you think of Wes Anderson, I'm guessing the first thing you think of is his unique visual style. In fact, the uniqueness of his visual style is one of his greatest hallmarks. And yet he's a director that is not afraid of blatantly borrowing from the work of great directors and great films that he admires. He's not afraid of remixing the work of those who have come before him. Amidst the countless homages and references in his filmography, one of the most thorough and blatant is his recreation of a scene from Alfred Hitchcock's Torn Curtain in the Grand Budapest Hotel. Torn Curtain, one of Hitchcock's less critically acclaimed films, is yet another film set in an Eastern European country on the brink of war. For the Grand Budapest Hotel, Anderson collected and studied many films that feature hotels in Europe or Eastern Europe as a setting. In addition to integrating many of these influences into his work directly, he made the collection of films available to the cast and crew to view during production. And the fingerprints of the films in this collection can be seen all over the Grand Budapest Hotel, sometimes subtly, like with The Silence. Sometimes he'll borrow an idea, like the downhill ski chase from the James Bond film On Her Majesty's Secret Service, but not copy the visuals directly. But some references are anything but subtle. Anderson's homage to Hitchcock is essentially a remake of the scene. But what makes such a blatant recreation an artful homage and not just a lazy ripoff? Let's take a look. The first and most obvious element is that Anderson imbues his version of the sequence with his own personal visual style. Even when he's essentially recreating the same shots, he recomposes them so that they fit within his more planimetric and symmetrical style. He turns Hitchcock's angled perspective into a straight on or profile perspective. Where the compositions match most blatantly are in places where Hitchcock is using symmetrical or planimetric compositions himself. Anderson also adds his own flair to certain moments. One particularly clever example is the use of the bus's shade and the reflection to reveal Surge X on his motorcycle, instead of cutting back and forth like Hitchcock does. Anderson's version of the scene also isn't a perfect match in the edit. He retimes certain cuts and elements to fit his film's faster pace, and he adds score to the sequence where Hitchcock has none. But Anderson isn't just using Hitchcock's sequence as visual inspiration, he's using the reference to add to the experience of the story. Here's how. If you've never seen Torn Curtain, you'll appreciate Anderson's sequence on its own. But if you have seen Torn Curtain, the homage is direct enough that you'll probably recognize the sequence. If you do, you'll know how Hitchcock's sequence ends. Paul Newman's character successfully evades his tale by listening for his footsteps. Anderson's homage follows the sequence so closely that if you've seen Hitchcock's, 
you'll probably expect the same result. But here, Anderson turns the sequence on its head in a clever way. Surge X is able to catch Jeff Goldblum's character by removing his shoes so Deputy Kovacs can't hear his footsteps. And I think this is what makes such a direct and extended homage like this artful. Anderson isn't just using Hitchcock's sequence because he likes it and wants to copy it. He's using it to potentially play with the expectations of anyone who's seen the Hitchcock film. And this actually works both ways. For someone who's seen the Grand Budapest Hotel first and then goes back and watches Torn Curtain, you might expect Paul Newman's character to get caught and be surprised when he goes free. Having seen one sequence doesn't spoil the other, but actually adds to the suspense of watching it. This is why a film critic or analyst might say that two films can be in conversation with each other, because the experience of watching one affects the other in this case in a positive way. Anderson does what a good video essay does, takes another artist's work and uses it to create something that says something new, has a different conclusion or experience for the viewer, or adds to the conversation. If I'm going to borrow from another artist, I like to think of it this way. Am I adding to a broader conversation, or am I merely mimicking in hopes of achieving the same thing the original artist was? Mubi is an online streaming cinema with a heavy focus on curation. They have a library of films you can watch, and they also have a now showing section where they add a new film every day with an explanation of why it's worth your time. Their collection features art house, independent, foreign, and classic films, some of which you won't find anywhere else. Mubi has introduced me to a lot of great new films that I wouldn't have found otherwise, and it's also given me an opportunity to watch some older films that I've been meaning to watch for a long time. The film I want to recommend today is Andrei Tarkovsky's Nostalgia. Nostalgia is a fascinating film and it has some incredible imagery, and you can watch it as a part of the Mubi library when you sign up for your 30-day free trial at mubi.com slash thomasflight. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash Thomas Flight for your extended 30-day free trial. Thank you so much for watching, and I want to especially thank my patrons. Right now, at the $5 level, I'm doing a special series where I let my patrons choose a movie for me to watch, and then I review it. So if you want to get in on that, you can go to patreon.com slash Thomas Flight.